All right, guys, welcome back to American Heritage Garage. I hope you enjoyed uh, my GT Performer restoration video. Um, so this is kind of a secondary video to that. Uh, what we're gonna do, and so I'm actually shooting this before, see I'm tricky like that. What we're gonna do is um, go through and repack the wheel bearings on these new mags or used mags that I bought. Um, the rear's worse than the front, but we're gonna do both of them. So I've purchased some um, quarter inch stainless steel wheel bearings, uh, loose ball bearings, and then I've also purchased a new free wheel for the rear. Um, so we're gonna go through this and kind of, you know, I'll kind of show you how we do this. There isn't a lot of good videos out there, so I hope this helps some of you guys. So enough talking, let's get to it. All right guys, so we're gonna start with the front wheel. Uh, so we have 17 millimeter wrenches, I got two of them. Okay, we're gonna loosen up the jam nuts. Okay, on the outside here. Shouldn't be too hard, okay. So we're gonna try and keep track of everything, where everything goes. I'm also gonna run a tap down these axles. I was unable to find the GT rebuild kits. Um, you can hunt down the part number and everything from the original parts book, uh, but I was unable to find them on anywhere. So, you know, so you're gonna have kind of a thin nut here and then like a lock washer. So we'll set that off to the side. Okay, so now, we're gonna get on these flats here. I was unable so far, I'll find them, but I have not found the exact dust seals. I don't necessarily need them, but whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and hunt them down if we can. So I'm going to remove, unthread the cone just from one side. Said we're gonna clean these axles up. Hopefully they're good, not bent. So there's the cone. Taper side will go in. So now, our axle will come out, okay? So just for the sake of doing so, for right now, I'm gonna thread everything back together, just so I don't lose everything. So next step, guys, underneath these wheel seals, I don't know if you can see, the ball bearings are in there. So we don't wanna go and blow these things all over the place so we're going to be kind of careful and try and get these seals out like i said if you don't damage the seals you don't have to replace them that one came out pretty easy ball came with nine balls okay on this side Missing the ball over here. There's only eight on this side. Go ahead and grab a rag. So the races right here, guys, or the cups is what they're called also, are plastic, I think. They look plastic. Um, I don't even know if they come out. I'm not even gonna bother, because I don't have new ones. So um, if they did come out, I can't replace them, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. So we're just gonna leave those in there. Uh, but what you would do if you were gonna remove these, especially if they were steel, you would put a punch through the center to the other side, give it a tap, you know, kind of around 
and it should pop out and then vice versa from the other way and then you'd pop your new ones in so we will uh, we'll clean up all of our parts and we'll get our new bearings and we'll pack a bunch of grease in there and we will put this thing back together so guys before we get started I want to clarify one thing the bearing cups and I should have known this I don't even know why I said it the bearing cups here are metal I just they kind of look plastic and I just glanced at them uh, these could be replaced if you have them again I don't have them uh, so I'm not even gonna bother they look good there's no grooves there's nothing crazy I'm hoping the rear one which we'll look at in a minute is just as good as this one uh, so I took and packed a little grease on the inside are you supposed to do that to be honest with you I'm not sure but for me the more grease the better uh, I suppose if you were racing or doing something of that nature you would want uh, low drag uh, good lubrication in this case this bike's going to be ridden around on the street a little bit and it's no big deal uh, so if we keep enough grease in these bearings I'll be happy um, so I have my pack of bearings here and we let's see what did we do I cleaned up the axle okay so I took everything off cleaned it all up uh, ran a tap down it these are 10 millimeter uh, extra fine so by one threads um, so you got to have a tap for that so I reassembled the one side sorry about that guys my camera's gonna be having fits again so I reassembled this side of the axle I left three quarters stick out okay that's what it was when I took it apart so we're gonna pack these bearings in here again nine on each side this is just Napa wheel bearing and chassis grease so it's a good sticky grease we'll grease up the seat the cup the race whatever you want to call it it's a cup and we'll put our bearings around the outside. So we'll do nine of them on each side and then we'll put our, put our axle in. All right, we'll see how this goes, guys. The grease should capture this for the most part. So we're just gonna get them in there. Kind of side by side. bearings put a little more grease on the top side of all those So now we're going to run our axle in. Oop, we lost the bearing. So we're going to kind of let the cup do what the cup's supposed to do. Hold all that grease in there. So we're just going to kind of let the cone do what it's supposed to do hold those bearings in nice and greasy okay now we're gonna thread the cone down the other side taper side in and uh, that's what's gonna keep your your lateral left and right motion nice and tight so you want it just tight enough to where the axle doesn't move left and right and then you have a nice freewheel so we'll go ahead and thread that down and check back in in a second so once you're happy guys with the adjustment you've made uh, you can almost do it just by hand really and we're just feeling for play and we have a nice quiet freewheel okay so if you go a little too loose
you're gonna hear how much so really from there maybe like an eighth of a turn okay that's good the jam nut will hold it in place so now we're gonna take our seal slip it over shouldn't be too hard to push in so now we have our seal in put it in the other side already we'll slide our lock washer over these these little flat narrow nuts here have knurling on one side that goes in we're just gonna thread that down making sure we don't lose our adjustment tighten stuff up so I got a 15 millimeter that I cut kind of thin on a grinding wheel so I can hold this center nut I'm sure there's or the, the cup cone but you also want to hold the axle so the axle doesn't spin either because if the axle spins it's going to move the cone so on and so forth so it's kind of just a process uh, you might have to hold the axle on one side you can clamp something in a vise to hold the axle and then so you're not juggling too many things so I'm going to do that real quick uh, and then we'll come back double check the front and start on the rear okay so I got the jam nut tight we got a nice freewheel sounds good okay no play front's good it's pretty simple guys so we'll set this one aside and now we're going to go and uh, take apart the rear one there's a couple at least one special thing you'll need all right guys so we're going to start on the rear um, first and foremost what we have to do I'll, you can we'll see if you can hear this i'm sure you can hear that uh, first and foremost we have to remove the freewheel uh, this is a Shimano SF MX 30 uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace it with a new one I just went with the Shimano uh, that's what was on it good enough for me not looking for anything special 16 tooth um, so we'll just do that so what you're gonna need is a freewheel removal tool now maybe you can come up with something uh, this seemed easy for me buy it on Amazon it's not expensive so you'll see on these there's four notches that fit the teeth on the freewheel we have a 15 16 wrench we'll see if I can break this thing loose with this thing not really being supported all that well mm -hmm. take a little effort here I think um, got to find a way I don't want to put this wheel obviously in a vise being that it's plastic even if it was a steel rim I wouldn't want to um, I think what I'm gonna do I got an idea I'll be right back so we're gonna give this thing a little whack with the impact try to keep it square on here impact does the trick guys if you got one I'd suggest using it I wouldn't hit it too hard just give it a couple pops so there's our old freewheel the new one's got a little more uh, of a vibrant click to it so we will give everything a quick wipe off here make sure everything's looking good and now we're gonna proceed the same way guys we're gonna go ahead and break one of these jam nuts loose
gonna slide our axle out. I'm gonna take my pick here, guys. I'm gonna come in underneath this seal. It's missing some bearings for sure. We're gonna come in from underneath this seal and just pull up on it. Fling it on my shirt. So this one is missing two bearings. So there's only seven back here. So that's a, a good start. I think the bearings for that side are on this side, or I miscounted. Nope. So they were in there, but I don't know where, if they fell in or <laughs> what. But we got all the bearings, so it just didn't sound so good. So we're going to knock these out of here. We're going to go clean everything up, guys, and we're going to put, put this side back together. Oh, what I would suggest doing, too, before you loosen up this side of the axle, measure from the end of the jam nut to the end of the axle write it down so at least you know what one of your stick outs should be all right guys got the rear wheel all finished up uh, i skipped through some of the process because it's essentially the same as the front wheel there's really no difference um, we got a lot better sound okay none of that grinding good free wheel action spins nice so now the last thing to do uh, is go ahead and put the new freewheel on. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of anti-seize. Not a lot, just a little. And then we're going to go ahead. Our notches face out. Okay. Threads on normally. Probably just pop it with the impact once and that'll probably be good just like we did when we were taking it off I don't want to go too tight because this is just an aluminum hub I'll just do that I don't think that's going anywhere there we go how to rebuild uh, GT fan mags so pretty sweet um, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and include on this video just because some people might be curious uh, is how to actually install or properly mount a tube and tire so let's do that next all right guys let's get started with these tires um, pretty excited I hunted these down uh, I was pretty happy with the price I found uh, eBay Canada uh, actual GT the GT pattern the original freestyle wheels that came on this bicycle um, so pretty happy about that I'm gonna try and hunt down a couple extra sets just so I have them but we'll see and then I grabbed up some Goodyear 20 by 1.75 uh, bike tubes so we will get started unbox unband our tube okay open it up we're gonna put just a little bit of air in it just to make it uh, kind of straighten out a little bit. Okay, so we got a little air in the tube. That might even be too much, we'll see. So we're gonna take our tire. Let's see. Make sure I got them facing the way I want. We're gonna put the tube inside the tire. actually been a long time since I've done this <laughs> since I was a kid really and we want to try and make sure that there's really no kinks or anything like that okay so we get the tube in there it's all straight so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our rim and we're gonna set the valve stem right in place so we know where it's at and now we're going to set our inside bead in the rim okay so now we're like that so we got our valve stem coming through 
if you can see that valve stem coming through. And then we have the inside bead in the rim. So what that leaves us with is the outside bead on the outside of the rim. So we can kind of start putting this in, in a certain, you know, to a point, just with your hands and then it'll get too hard. What you want to do is hold it where you initially started. Then it'll start to get kind of interesting. You'll have to stretch it just the last little bit, but it's really not too bad. These are the gum wall tires. These might actually go without having to use a tool. They did. So that was pretty easy. Um, so what you want to make sure of is that everything's seated nicely and that you're not pinching this tube anywhere, okay? That's why you put a little air in it as well. If you need it, I would suggest, I've seen guys use screwdrivers, these are just some installation panel, uh, interior panel removal tools, okay? If you needed to pry this tire, get up under it to pry it in to make it fit over the rim, if you needed to, I would use these. So let's see, this says max pit pressure 45. Let's not put 45 pounds in. Actually, I lied. I did put 45 pounds in. With my big ass, it's going to take all the all the air that I can get in these tires just to hold me up so I don't flatten them out. So, there we go, guys. We are set to jet. I like it. Um, yeah. You know, let's just... Uh, Let's just go ahead and do the other one just for the heck of it. Why don't? There we go, guys. Two tubes and tires installed on rims with brand new uh brand new bearings so uh we're good to go i'm actually going to get started on the restoration that you've already watched hopefully uh right now all right guys there you have it that's how you rebuild gt fan mags uh and install tubes and tires uh, this is a very similar process for most hubs uh it could be different for different types of hubs but this is pretty standard okay um so, you know, realistically, I can show you on some actual spoked wheels at some point that are already on the bike, um, but that's how you do it. Um, and like I said, I know because I looked myself, there isn't a ton of information on this, so I hope if you're looking and you find this video that it was helpful. Uh, if you like the stuff, I know I do cars most of the time, but I'm hoping to throw some more bikes and stuff into the channel. Um, so if you like the stuff, please subscribe, please comment, ask questions, I always try and answer. Uh, I appreciate all the support, the likes, the shares, the comments, the subscriptions, so on and so forth, guys. Uh, so thanks for all that. And as always, until next time, we'll see you out here at American Heritage Garage.